Are you new to Rise of Kingdoms or have you been playing for years? Today we are covering what not to do in Rise of Kingdoms. I promise it's going to be a fun one. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms gameplay episode from your very own Shappy Gaming. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button in the channel, be sure to do it right over there, bottom right hand corner. And if I haven't earned it yet, you are going to want to watch this video. So if you've been around for a little while, you know that a lot of my videos are guides. There's a new event. How do you do it? How do you optimize your gems? Today, we have a video unlike any I've made before. And that is what not to do in Rise of Kingdoms. Some of these are kind of jokes. Some of these are not so much jokes. What I will say is if you have things that you think you should not do in Rise of Kingdoms, add them to the comment section below. The funniest joke will actually get pinned to this video. So the first item that we have for anyone who is new or old to the game, do not invest universal gold heads into Charlemagne El Cid or Ragnar? I've seen a number of questions on Reddit. You know, is Ragnar good? I just got him. No, don't do it. It is a mistake. I promise you will regret it. The next one we have is the biggest error that I have seen Rise of Kingdoms players make from day one. Spending gems on ridiculous things. For example, you know, you may be new to the game, having a blast, you got these cool gems things. You know, I think that I might want to buy some resources from the shop, not the VIP shop, the shop. Don't do it. It is a mistake. You can create a farm and you don't need to spend gems on that. But it gets worse. You know, maybe you just started. Like these silver keys that you're getting. Uh... Why don't you buy some for 300 gems a piece? We've all been there. You know, you're opening keys and you're like, oh, this is a great idea. Don't do it. <laughs> Silver keys are potentially the worst thing in Rise of Kingdoms. Feel free to disagree in the comment section below. Don't spend gems on silly things. That includes silver keys. That includes res a lot of the time. That also includes things in the courier station that you probably don't need to spend gems on. Like... Oh, I don't know. The 24-hour gathering boost. Don't do it, Chappy Squad. Don't do it. The next thing is something that I may or may not have done when I first started playing Rise of Kingdoms. And so, here I am to impart just a little bit of advice. There are two talent trees that you really don't want to use. The first is integrations. Not worth using. Don't put talent points into it. The second is even worse, and that is versatility, which you definitely do not want to be putting talent points into. Let me see, who who even has versatility these days? I'm sure Dragon Lancer, I think, does. There we go. Oh yeah. Don't invest in versatility. Just don't, just don't do it. Just not not worth it. <laughs> Next one. So this is something that I've actually seen a lot of people ask about and it is bringing secondary commanders to level 60. It's just don't. There's, there's no need to bring secondary commanders to level 60 ever. When you're setting up a march, the only commander that matters is your primary commander. So if I was to send out a, a march right now, here, let me grab someone, we'll do Attila Takeda, or Attila Nevsky. My Nevsky does not need to be level 60. Don't waste your XP on getting a secondary commander to level 60. Especially not someone who is specifically built for being a primary. So please don't. <laughs> the next one is making equipment for those secondary commanders. The talents and the equipment and the level of your secondary commanders do not matter. Takeda is the secondary for Attila a lot of the time. You'll see... He's not level 60, he's chilling at level 40, and he has no equipment. You only need to put equipment on your primary commanders, and you don't need to have any good talents on your secondary commanders. It doesn't matter. Don't waste your XP, don't waste your materials. I got you. Just, just don't do it. It'll help you in the end. And some of these things you really can't go back on once you've done it. So the next one is one of my favorites. And for some of you, this may be a joke. For others, not so much. Our dear Lohar. 
We all love Lohar. You got Lohar early in the game. He's one of your favorites, right? Please don't fight in the field with Lohar. It's just not worth it. He is not built for field fighting. Don't put him in the field. Don't gather resources with him. You use Lohar for barbs. In fact, don't put any of the green commanders in the field. Just, just don't. Advanced commanders shouldn't go in the field, and neither should Lohar. Hopefully that helps some of you, especially if you're early days. Just, just don't do it. The next one we're talking about is attacking cities with Lohar. If you're launching a rally, probably not worth putting Lohar in there. Just, just a suggestion. You guys do you, you know. The next one I have gotten a lot of heat for, and it is in twofold. Rallies. Everyone can join rallies. We love joining rallies. But you shouldn't join rallies when you're 20 minutes away. And there's this neat little thing here that says March time. So if you see that you are half an hour away from a rally, don't join it. No. What? Yeah. You guys heard me. Don't join rallies from 20 minutes away. Don't join them from 10 minutes away unless it's a 10 minute rally. Just pro tip. And another one to the same effect. They added recently this new thing where you could see what troop type is being requested. As you can see, we've got infantry, cavalry, archers, siege. You can even tap on this and it'll tell you what kind of troop it wants. A lot of the time, people will not only join from 15, 20 minutes away, but they'll also send the wrong troop type. And so it's actually really nice these days, if they've requested a troop type, you will default to the troop type they've requested. And if you send the wrong one, you won't have a thumbs up on it. So just don't. <laughs> okay, and the next one is one that if you heard the interview with Gaines Gaming, you know he did. If you missed that, check that out on the top right side of your screen. I fortunately have not done this, but please, don't put universal sculptures into gathering commanders. If they, if they have a gathering thing here, just, just don't. You can get gold heads for gathering commanders through all sorts of events, and you can get these commander sculpture chests, which are specifically for them. Don't put your unis in them. Use them for fighting commanders, like, I don't know, Richard, Alex, YSG, any that may be useful long-term. Okay, I got the next one for you guys. Do not go offline in enemy territory. KVK is fun, right? We all love KVK. I'm sure there are some good ones right now. Let's see. What do we got? We got a heroic anthem. They're four days in. Nah, we need one that's a little bit further along. 46. Oh, yeah, let's go here. So we're going to just take a look at this KVK for you guys. And you can tell me where you should and should probably not TP based upon which alliance you're in. So here we go. We're in that, uh, oh no, are we in that KVK? No, we're in a, yeah, we're in a home kingdom. But the point is the same. Do not go offline in enemy territory in Rise of Kingdoms, especially in KVK. If you TP onto enemy territory and you get zeroed, that's on you. I've been there. I've tried to rescue people too, except I tried to rescue people that weren't in my alliance. And so I attacked their city instead. Whoops. <laughs> Next one. Spend credits on silver keys. You guys heard me say gems probably should not be spent on silver keys. Well, there are these sweet alliance credits that you can get too, which are great for all sorts of things. You can buy booze, you can buy passports, you can buy VIP points, and you can buy silver keys. Please don't. Just, just maybe not, you know. <laughs> Okay, so we are coming up on our last few, and I hope this has been entertaining. I know this, this video is kind of joking with you guys, but also I know there are people who have just started the game and they have all sorts of questions or things that they may do on accident. So my hope is that I can help you guys not do those. And so this next one is for those that are R4 or King in early kingdoms. If a city's bubbled, please don't use imprison on it. And if you don't know what Imprison in, there's this sweet king skill that you got in here. You can see that it's, here you go, skills. Imprison, you can lock a governor's city in one location. And they can't teleport for 10 minutes. If the city's bubbled, they're not teleporting. And you can't hit them. Don't imprison them. 
Same thing goes if they're on their own alliance territory in KVK. Don't imprison them. You can't hit them. <laughs> okay. Now, this is one that I can honestly tell you guys has happened in real life. And there was a, a player that I played with who did this in a KVK. He fell asleep offline. And he had none other than the glorious City Keeper on his wall. Yes, City Keeper. Our dear friend, City Keeper. The name may deceive you, but City Keeper is not a good commander to have trying to keep your city safe. Please don't put City Keeper on your wall. Please don't put Markswoman on your wall. Please at least use someone with the garrison tree. Just, you know, pro tip there. Advanced commanders don't work for defending your city. You will get zero. And last but not least, on a more serious note, I've done this, we've all done this. Don't get tempted by shiny object syndrome to invest in multiple commanders at once. What this ends up doing is you end up having a lot of commanders that are never going to be finished that are only kind of useful. I did this with Genghis Khan. He's 5511 and totally useless in the field. I did this with Richard, who is 4255. Five, five. Yes, I changed his skills for Bastions. The point's the same. Pick a commander and max them if you want to max them. I hope that you guys have enjoyed. As I said, you may have different ideas of things that you think should not be done in Rise of Kingdoms. Please leave them in the comment section below. The best one will get pinned. I hope that you guys have enjoyed. If you have, do be sure to hit that subscribe button right over there, bottom right hand corner, and hit the bell so you get notified when new episodes come out. Thank you. Shappy out.